Yes, Naniwa at the moment is a really aggressive cutthroat player. He doesn't mess around. He goes for his build, he executes it, and more often than not also executes his opponent in the process. It's nasty, it's brutal, it's not pleasant. But that's Naniwa for you. That's why Naniwa is one of the best foreigners. Cold, calculating, and perfect timing. And he's also willing to take risks, which is actually a mark of a great player. And as it turns out, that proxy play by him, while risky, was very worthwhile. Zelnaga Caverns will be the second map, ladies and gentlemen. We're heading in right here. Strelik going in with a one-game disadvantage in his best of three series. And here we go. Naniwa in the blue trunks. He is playing Protoss to the southwest of this particular map versus his opponent, the one and only Strelok in the red trunks. He is playing Terran. So we'll see as to whether or not Strelok decides to go for that Reaper Fast Expand opening. And if he does, will Naniwa be aware of what's coming in? Naniwa actually did not scout his opponent at all. He was utterly confident that he knew exactly what his opponent was doing. And it worked out for him. It really, really did. That said, if something else crazy was going on in the background, it might not have worked out so well. But Strelok was not able to get that information, so it really didn't make too much of a difference. He didn't know where the Proxy Stargate was, he didn't know the Proxy Stargate was even coming until that first Void Ray started attacking his mineral line, and by that point it was actually too late. Now, of course, this map is also quite the common proxy map. I mean, this area, for instance, is perfect for Proxy Stargate play. You do all sorts of nasty things there. Uh, however, it's more common to see it, so it's also more common to scout it. So if, say, uh, we were going to have some Proxy Stargates right here, which is a common place for it. Strelok would probably scout it quite nicely. Now, we're still waiting to find out what Strelok will actually do. He's got the Barracks coming up right here. I wouldn't be surprised to see that Reaper opening like he did last time. We'll see when he decides to put his gas down and whether or not he opens up with a tech lab on the Barracks. If he does, then he no doubt is going for that fast expansion covered by the Reaper. It worked out the last time he did it very, very well, in fact. Second, the first Assimilator, in fact, going down for Naniwa. A little bit late major about that but concentrating on the mineral count more so than anything else not seeing any crazy proxy gateway play or anything like that refinery is now on its way up for strelok that is gonna be a little bit late tech lab will be delayed that said of course bear in mind that there's no point building the tech lab early if you then don't have the gas to build the reaper it's assuming he's gonna do that in fact marine is on its way out for him so what we saw from the last attempt on Zelnaga Cabins by Strelok may not happen this time around. Probably kind of sensible, really, because Naniwa would expect something like that. Cybernetic score coming down for Naniwa as well. Single gateway is all he's got. And currently sitting on one assimilator. He is not... Yes, he is, actually. He's saving up some Chrono Boost right here. There is the possibility they'll go for some kind of four gateway attack. Tech Lab is now coming down for Strelok, and he is only on one barracks, so I still expect to see a Reaper play. So there you go. And he will follow that up with an expansion. Naniwa has a really aggressive four gate style that he could pull off right here. Strelok scouts. He sees. doesn't see the gas count, so that might be unhelpful. Quick chrono boost right here. We'll see whether or not he decides to go for that aggressive four gateway play. Naniwa's foregate is something to be terrified of. Your average foregate is kind of scary. Naniwa's foregate, yeah, it, it's, not, it's not nice. I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that if I were anybody. We're looking for the real possibility of a few more gateways coming down. He has a very large, I do a very large minimal count. He does have a sentry on the way up. Two more gateways coming down. And of course, pulling up the sentry to use the gas so he's got the minerals for another gateway. Two gateways down for Naniwa, and he is not, I believe he, did he actually cancel that? Or was he incredibly quick on that? It's a possibility. Because Strelok just scouted three gateways, not four. Strelok is preparing to deal with a four gateway attack, however. Stimmer's on the way, but it's not going to be up in time to deal with it. That bunker is going to have to hold. Now, what he's hoping to do is to bleed his opponent dry on his defenses. Now, Strelok getting a good little bit of harassment in right here. Pick off a couple of probes. Naniwa looks for the surround right here. And that Reaper taking out two, looking for three. Can he get three? He gets three. Looks for the fourth. And finally picked off a little bit of harassment. Not critical. Naniwa is not going for that fourth gateway unless he's proxying it up here. That's a possibility. Three gateway aggression for the time being. Also could be a Stargate play late on, but Stargate play with... Taking that assimilated so late seems so very unlikely. The foregate would have been scouted by Strelok. There's the quick warp in. 
No gateway proxy or anything like that, so he's not hiding anything. This is just a basic three gateway, but the thing is, three gateway, you've got to do something with it. It's got to be three gateway plus something. Either you've got to expand, which he certainly has the money for, but he could be saving for a warp in as well. Probe is on its way down, so it looks like he may be expanding. Three more stalkers warping in, so maybe not. Just three gate is not all that fantastic, honestly. I mean, it's not a lot of firepower you can bring to bear on your opponent. He does have an army supply advantage, but with that amount of firepower in the back, this is not going to do all that much. We'll see if he can break the line, however, that on the other hand will. He's prevents the re oh, nicely done, prevents the repairs. The bunker is down right here, and that's going to be really problematic right now for Strelok. Great force field placement right here by Naniwa, who is carrying on an aggressive campaign with only three gateways right now. Charging forward once again, Strelok looking for the defense and is able to drive his opponent away. Naniwa is expanding behind this in the meantime, and Strelok is sacrificing a number of SCVs to make this work. The Guardian Shield is proving to be very useful. Naniwa noting that his opponent went for a Marine Heavy strategy. A Stim and a counter-attack right here by Strelok. Able to pick off a couple, but it's not quite good enough. And Naniwa keeping up this pressure. It's only from three gateways. Bear that in mind, so his economy is in a great state. Strelok pulling more SCVs off the line. Throwing them in for the slaughter right now. Two picked off for free there by Naniwa. Playing incredibly cool, incredibly smooth, cold and calculating right now. Army supply count still in favor of Naniwa, not by a huge amount in the meantime. He must surely bring in some more heavy hitting units. With those stalkers on the field and with those sentries in play as well, he's still not building any marauders. He's relying entirely on marines. Those Guardian Shields are blunting Strelok very nicely, and there's no engineering bail at all. No upgrades coming up right now for Strelok, so I'd be very concerned right now. Naniwa's happy with what he's done, and I don't really blame him. 17 SCVs to 29 probes. Even with the mules backing it up, that's not going to make the difference. You can see his income dipped slightly when he transferred these probes, but it's going all the way back up. Things are looking good for Naniwa right now. 